failing. I don't think it's going to be in business much longer, but everyone knows it's got very little influence, and they got some publicity. Glenn Beck, uh, he, uh, years ago with uh, John McCain, do you remember he said he will support Hillary Clinton over John McCain? He wanted to support Hillary Clinton over John McCain. So, you know, Glenn Beck is, every time I watch him, he's crying. He's like a mess. He's got a lot of problems. <laughs> he's, he's like a total mess, but I would say this. Those people and many people are coming over now, Michael, that you wouldn't even believe. Everybody wants to come over. They see the poll numbers. They see what's going on. We have a movement. We're having 25,000 people and 35,000 people show up to events. And we have a movement that's taking our country back. And we're going to straighten out the country. We're going to take it back. And it's going to be so good. And we're going to all be proud of it. I mean, everybody's going to be proud of it. But a lot of the people that you're talking about, and a lot of people that you least suspect are calling now. They want to come over to our side, and I think I'm going to unify the party because our party is badly divided. Our country is divided, and even the Republican Party is divided. So I think we have a chance to really take our country back and also strengthen our party. Well, Mr. Stone has put out an email today saying that the Republicans are conspiring to steal the primary from you, even if you win it. What are we going to do if that happens, Mr. Trump? I hope that that doesn't happen. You know, in, in boxing, when you go into a territory where it's a home court advantage for one of the fighters, the other fighter says, well, the only way I know I can win is to knock him out. And the way I win is to win the primaries, because if I win the primaries, they can't take anything. So we're going to win a lot, I think. And uh, hopefully we can do great in Iowa and I, in New Hampshire. We're, uh, we have a big, big lead. And in uh, South Carolina and Nevada, we have a big lead. So we'll see what happens. But, hey, look, you know, these people don't like to lose their power. And a lot of them don't even care about who's president. They just want to keep their little seat of power. It's all about the, the gravy train, isn't it? Finally, Mr. Trump, how important is the Jerry Falwell Jr. endorsement to you? Is it very significant? To me, the Jerry Falwell Jr. Uh, endorsing me, and I just found out about it. It just happened a little while ago. Is such a big event. He's a respected religious leader like like few others i mean he's respected by everybody he's loved by everybody he's also seen everybody you know uh, his school liberty university has done has a magnificent auditorium that holds like 12,000 people a tremendous place and everybody goes that's running for office virtually has gone through liberty university at one point i was there two weeks ago and everybody and to have jerry come out and support me is a tremendous is a tremendous thing and we have sarah palin and we have willie we have we have so many great supporters it's amazing willie robertson uh, we have so many great supporters and i tell you what you have a lot more coming because they're, they all want to join the bandwagon now donald before you go i've been backing you from the day you started we have nothing in common meaning we we don't have business together we don't do business together. There's no deals between us. I just want the best for America. I want a winner. I want someone who can take on ISIS. I want someone who can defeat China in negotiations. I want Mexico to stop flooding us with immigrants. Uh, now we have the Zeta virus coming in from South America. This is insanity. Donald, you're the only candidate who can do this. And I know women, smart women, business women who are very wealthy, built their own businesses, Donald. Every one of them. Some of them are even liberals are backing you. Do you know that? I, I think it's so great. I think we're going to do even better than the poll numbers are showing, I hope. You know, a lot of people are saying that, where the polls are so great, but we may do better. But who knows? We have to see. Hey, look, I'm working hard, and a lot of people are working hard, and we have such great support, but we still have to get there. And I don't want to take anything for granted. I always like to say there's a long way to go. But I will say this, just to finish off. If I get there, you will be very proud. And you have been an original backer from a long time ago, and I appreciate it, Michael, and I'll never forget it. I know you don't. That's something people don't understand about you. And they don't understand about the winning personality is that you never forget your friends and you never forget those who put knives in your back. Donald Trump, all I can say is my audience is 98% behind you. I'm, sh I'm sorry it's that low, but I'll work on the other 2% over the coming weeks. That's great. Well, you are a great guy, and, and I really appreciate it. And I'm heading to Iowa right now. Actually, uh, as soon as this call is over, I'm going to be on a plane for Iowa, and I'm going to have a lot of fun there tonight. And uh, they're amazing people, and I think we're going to do well there. Enjoy the meatloaf, and thank you, and God bless you, Donald. Thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. All right. Well, Mr. Trump's on his way to the airport, I understand, to head out to Iowa. He said to Michael Savage, you've been an original supporter. 
I'd like to ask you, the listener, you are the ultimate judge. The phone number here is 855-407-282. I don't want to be generic and say what you think of the interview, because many of you will say, good job, Michael. Did you hear the questions that I actually asked him, all of you doubting Thomases? Can anyone listening to this program at this time tell me anybody in the media, anyone, anyone, left, right, or center, said to Donald Trump that some people call you a bully? Did you think I handled that well? Did you think that Donald Trump answered it well? We talked about immigration. We talked about appointing only a combat experienced veteran as defense secretary rather than these, uh, I don't know what to call them, lobbyists who run the Defense Department going back to Vietnam. And I recommended Senator Tom Cotton for the job since he is exactly that, an experienced veteran who is now a U.S. Senator. We then talked about Bernie Sanders as a naked, far-left, radical, some would say communist. And I asked him to comment on that. We talked about Muslims in Europe and what he would do to stop the flood of immigrants into America. And the phone number here, if you care to call the show, is 855-407-282. You're listening to the one and only Savage Nation. I'll be back in a minute. Well, you heard the interview with Donald Trump. Many of you heard all of it, some of it, most of it. Personally, from my point of view, of all of the interviews that I've done on this show since 2011, I will remind you, uh, 2011 says one, two, three, four, five, six. Today is the seventh interview. This was the best. I felt it was the most pointed, and uh, no one expected me to ask at least one of those questions. We made news today, incidentally. And I've invited you to call, and before you... I take your calls. We're almost out of time, believe it or not. Some of the news out there has to be talked about. For example, you heard about the active shooter in the San Diego hospital today. Active shooter, active shooter, active shooter. And did you hear the commands that they gave the Navy uh, personnel? Hide, run, or fight. The last was fight. That's the new military under Barack Obama. Hide, run, or fight. Can you believe this country has fallen to this level? Not fight, but hide, run, and fight. That's the military under Barack Obama. For those of you who want to know what's happening in the world, Italy has covered nude statues during the Iranian madman president's museum visit. Italian officials have capitulated to this throwback monster from Iran and covered up ancient statues because the Muslim, who, as you well know, is so holy and clean and pure and better than everybody on the planet, was visiting the museum, and the wooden panels were used to cover statues inside Rome's Capitoline Museums. I've never heard of anything like this. It used to be when in Rome do as the Romans do. Apparently it's now, well, you fill in the blank yourself. We've got tons of callers. There's room for one more. No, oops, line is gone. We will post the Donald Trump interview on michaelsavage.com at the end of the show. I thank you for listening. And remember this, all current enemies attacking Donald Trump have attacked Michael Savage for years. Never forget that, because I won't, nor should you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. news on the savage nation don't expect to read it on any website because i'm the uh outsider as you well know i'm not a member of the clique that uh, the national review supports or their followers uh in in the media but the fact is, is that we made news and i did it for you the listener i try to bring you the best show i can every day and i believe donald trump knows that donald trump's been on the show six or seven times i first interviewed him in 2011 five years ago long before any of you knew who he was you took him on seriously then. Yeah, well, who cares about Trump? 
you know, blah, blah, blah. Now all of a sudden everyone's supporting Trump after stabbing him in the back for the last 30 days. They're all like, oh, yeah, I get along with him. I, I love Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, we're buddies. Oh, yeah, we met him on the beach. We were running around together. We were collecting seashells in the sand. Yeah, we collect seashells all the time. But the fact is, is that uh, we had the interview. I asked you what you thought of it. You called 855-407-282. We'll take some of your calls. But this news just came out. Fox News is now mocking Donald Trump's threat to pull out of the debate. The idiots at Fox News said in a Twitter, we learned from a secret back channel that the Ayatollah and Putin both intend to treat Donald Trump unfairly when they meet with him if he becomes president. A nefarious source tells us that Trump has his own secret plan to replace the cabinet with his Twitter followers to see if he should even go to those meetings, Fox said in a tongue-in-cheek statement. That's juvenile. It's idiotic. Everyone knows Megyn Kelly is not a journalist. Everyone knows Megyn Kelly is a showgirl. Everyone knows that Megyn Kelly is trying to attack Trump because she's jealous of his wife. Everyone knows that. And I, I suggest he shouldn't go, by the way. And he posted a vote in which Twitter users can answer the question, should I go to the GOP debate? And as of when uh, the show began, 3 o'clock, yes votes were slightly outpacing no votes. I would say don't go. But he'll probably do it. I don't think he needs to go to another debate. As you well know, this debate coming up Thursday night, I believe, is the final idiotic Republican debate. They should stop it already. They're only weakening themselves by attacking each other. They should be focusing on the communist and the Harridan. And then finally, the caucus. The GOP gathering before the Iowa caucus, caucus, caucus on Monday. Caucus. The average American, if you stopped in the street and said, what is a caucus? What is a caucus? They don't know. We have an ant the most antiquated political system in the world is found in the United States of America. It's like 1870. The buggy whip. No Henry Ford. No cars. The buggy whip. We have the buggy whip of politics in America. A caucus? What, 50 people decide who's going to win? Caucus! They could get Joe from the, from the diner, and they get Mary from, from the mattress factory, and they get the other one who's a, a pig killer. Another one knows how to tie hogs. Another one knows how to grow wheat. Wonderful people, great. They're the bedrock of America. They're going to tell me who's going to win the debate in Iowa, and I'm supposed to vote based on 16 people in Iowa. You hear the system that we have? Meanwhile, this morning, a, a backfire occurs somewhere in San Diego, and the whole military goes on lockdown. And the idiots running the military put out a, a, a note, active shooter. And, and they told everyone, run, no, hide, run, or fight. They let them fight. You either hide, run, or fight. That's the new motto of the U.S. Navy. H Can you believe this? The new motto of the U.S. Navy is hide, run, or fight. Take a guess who's running the U.S. Navy. Take a look at Obama put in there. Some girl who can't, uh, who can't row a rowboat is running the U.S. Navy. All right, girls, line up now. That's running the U.S. They hide, run, and fight. Now they want Bernie Sanders to be the commander-in-chief. Can you believe this? A loser from Katz's Delicatessen. I, I, I don't know this country. What a choice that would be. Donald Trump versus Bernie Sanders. 85-15. No matter how they stock, stack it against them. All right, let's go to the callers because Mark on JRW in Michigan is the first up this hour. Mark, go ahead, please. What's your question or comment? Hey, Mr. Savage. Thanks for taking my call. I've only actually heard your show a couple of times, and I'm really glad that I tuned in today. I've heard a bunch of interviews already with Mr. Trump, who I really like a lot, but yours has been by far one of the best interviews I've heard with him. He didn't waste a lot of time talking about a, a lot of fluff issues, like, you know, the Ted Cruz stuff, you know, their little scuffle they're having. I thought you asked some really good questions, especially about, you know, who wants to run the Defense Department and what Mr. Trump wants to do with that. And the second thing I wanted to say, I wanted to apologize to you and all your viewers uh, for voting for Barack Obama the first time. One of the biggest mistakes in my life. I'll never do it again. Well, you're from Michigan, filled with kind people, nice people who want to do the right thing. And you don't have to apologize for being nice, but Obama exploited the niceness in America's heartland. There's no question he's a con man. And he has stabbed us in the back. But nevertheless, thanks for listening to the show. And I'm going to send you a gift. If you're a new listener, you're going to get a copy of Government Zero, my most recent best-selling book. Government Zero, it's something you're going to want to have for your library. 
right through to the election. Uh, let's go to the next caller, my friends. KSFO, right in my hometown of San Francisco. Jeff, welcome to the